It's all to do with static electricity, giving a positive and negative charge to the car bodies and the paint so they are attracted to one another. As I shall now demonstrate using this Van de Graaff generator, this box of polystyrene balls, and my hand. Imagine my hand is the car body, the balls are the paint. Put the body in the paint and not a lot happens really. We're in balance. What I need to do now is give myself a positive charge. I put my hand on there before I switch it on. I'm told that's very important. I'm standing on a mat to insulate myself, so I'm going to turn it on. I can feel the hairs on my hand standing up, probably on my head as well, as I'm taking on <laughs> a positive charge. Now, by contrast, the polystyrene balls have a slight negative charge. So that means they should be attracted to my hand. So, plunge car body into paint. Whoa! <laughs> you can see immediately they're going berserk. They're sticking to me like mad. And actually, the reason they're pinging off is that they're actually repelling each other. And eventually, it's smoothing down until it's just one layer thick. That's how they use electricity, to get an even layer of paint. Roman Silk, because you've built dams all over yes. the world. A few countries, in Turkey, in Bulgaria, in, in Iran. You know this dam probably more intimately than anybody else. It looks so delicate. It looks, it doesn't look like a big heavy thing. It's relying on its shape. This <laughs> shape of it then, this, this curve. It's like an arch. If you turn it by 90 degrees, it looks like that. The dam's arch shape means the force of the water on the wall is transferred into the mountains on either side. So it actually uses the power of the water behind it to secure itself into the valley. It does this so well, they were able to make it very thin, using far less concrete in the process. So the load on it, and from here, yes. it's, you can see that yeah. amount of water is pushing against that. Exactly, yeah. It's straining yeah. to hold it back. It's, it's pushing working. into the mountain. But the Conbrine Dam is not just curved in one direction, it's curved in two, horizontally and vertically, transferring the force of the water not only to the mountains at the sides, but also into the ground. The forces exerted on the wall are so immense, Roman and his team must monitor them constantly, 24-7. This machine might look a bit like one of those fortune-telling machines at a fairground doesn't tell your fortune, but it does tell the future of a car because it's fitting them with RFID tags. A deceptively simple and tiny radio frequency identification tag is attached to the chassis of each car. It contains every bit of information about the vehicle being made. And using electromagnetic fields, the robots identify the thousands of individual components needed to turn that chassis into a unique car. So that one piece of metal is just a car part until now. There, that's it, that's the moment. That's now a car, officially. Workers here call that moment the baptism. That was just another car part delivered here just in time. When it's been stamped with that ID, that will bring with it all the information to coordinate this whole endeavor to turn that piece of metal into an entire car built specifically to somebody's taste. Is this actually off a of Super Galaxy? It is. Um, this engine's actually been on wing for over 12 years. So how long is this going to be in for what I suspect is quite an expensive service? We target 90 days. Yeah. Uh, I suspect it'll take longer, but depends, that's our target. Depends what you find in there. Yes. Okay, well look, this is a jet engine. It is, to the layman, just a mass of pipes and tubes. It looks like the back of the most complicated washing machine ever. A regular jet engine mixes air and fuel in a combustion chamber and then propels the resulting exhaust out the back. That's what delivers thrust. But General Electric came up with a radical modification. They added a huge turbofan at the front, which drives more air at high speed into the combustion chamber and, crucially, even more air through a bypass chamber around the outside of it. Forcing air around as well as through the combustion chamber made these high bypass engines more powerful than ever before and revolutionized air travel. When you produce enough cars every year to create a tailback from New York to Las Vegas, they have to be shifted off site as quickly as they're made. Hence, 60 kilometers of track and the largest private rail station in Europe. 
But big infrastructure comes with its own problems. In the old days, freight leaving a factory might be loaded onto a train like this. A complete trainload of empty wagons would be shunted into place at dispatch. It's then loaded using ramps in between the wagons, means the first cars can drive the full length of the train and it can all be filled in one go. But bear in mind, when it's 20 wagons long before they can hook it all up and depart, it takes time. So quicker is important. And the answer to that is over here. It's a sliding stage, three wagons wide. And how it works is wonderfully simple. It moves sideways. Empty wagons can be shunted into empty bays. Cars can be loaded onto waiting wagons and fully loaded wagons can be hooked up to waiting trains, all at the same time. It's fast and it's flexible because each car only has to travel at most the length of one wagon. It is really, really clever. It's time to get my convoy on board. But such a massive load can't just be placed randomly in the cargo hold. They know it'll fit in. It's where do you put it? Where does its weight sit? How does that affect the center of gravity, the balance of the aeroplane? With vehicles weighing different amounts, the distribution of weight on the plane must be precise. It's a lot like balancing a seesaw. Too much weight at the front or back, and the plane will be very difficult, or worse, impossible to fly. The fulcrum of a perfectly balanced plane is called the center of gravity. And it's different for every load. It's more than just clever packing. It's engineering, line. 23-year-old loadmaster Sam Richardson has already calculated where the center of gravity is for all of these vehicles. Each has to be parked in a precise position, especially one vehicle. We have the center of gravity on the actual vehicle itself. So let's go look at where it's at. Yeah. It's going to be marked right here in the vehicle. So the load is balanced. The marker on the second Humvee must be lined up exactly with the plane's center of gravity. 